Hi guys, it's Mark Rees here again. Um, I've set you a little challenge. Um, you've got to watch the video. And it's, it's just, you're going to see me working with clay. So if you can get your hands on clay, which you can do, because I know my daughters did it. They went on, I think it was Amazon Prime and got it the next day. Um, or you could, that, you could just ask for some grey buff clay. Or you can get some air drying clay. In fact, I think on the last lockdown, lockdown lessons, we used air drying clay. So you can get your hands on that and that just dries out in a couple of days. Or you can pop it in the oven for a, an hour or two. I usually put it in with the pizzas. And before you know it, in a couple of hours, it's pretty much rock hard and you can paint it with either acrylic paints or water-based paints. Uh, but there's some chat in this video, so just, just look at that. Um, with regard to the salt dough, um, you can look, there's options. So basically it's table salt, uh, plain flour and water. I've got I've got one here. It says 500 grams of flour, 500 grams of table salt, uh, 250 milliliters of warm water, and I I would add a tablespoon of vegetable oil to that. Um, you can actually once you've made this, you can actually keep it for several weeks in the fridge, but in a sealed airtight container up to two weeks. Not necessarily in the fridge as long as it's in a it's in an airtight container so it's pretty cool it's reusable as long as you put it away and put the lid on um so uh there you have it so all, all i want you to do is to watch the video uh, try not to fall asleep and then do the task at the end okay so uh mr reese and his art club signing out i just like to show you this bucket here i actually do quite a bit of recycling i don't just buy new clay from from stock um so as you can see here, maybe if you'd like to come in closer, this is bits of clay which have gone hard. And literally, I put them into a bin full of water and I can recycle the clay. That will soon be absorbed in there and um, we can reuse it again. So we, we need it like bread. So basically, we're getting the air bubbles out of it. Uh, getting it malleable, ready to work with. And if it doesn't, we can talk about options a little bit later. But moving over here, right, obviously I know, but it's a way of getting the air bubbles out. And if you don't get the air bubbles out, when you come to fire it, it will blow up, okay? So you can often hear a muted explosions going on, and that's the clay that has got air bubbles in it. That's mini little caves inside of here that the air expands, it's got nowhere to go, boom. And you can destroy the persons next to you. So it can be very frustrating for somebody who doesn't take a little bit of care on getting the air bubbles out. So just this lovely slapping technique. Okay, so there we go. That would be ready to use. Uh, there are different types of clay that you can get. I know at Murray House, I was down there the other week and I could only see um, air drying clay, which has got quite a lot of paper in it, I believe, uh, plus other things which makes it strong and it obviously dries in the air. It can actually go in the oven as well and it can actually go in the kiln. But the stuff that I've got at work here is called grey buff and we get it from pottery crafts. So there we go, there's a little uh, promotion for pottery crafts. So anyway, here we go. So as you can see here, I've actually cheated a bit. I've actually started in rolling out a slab of clay. My idea is to try and work on the theme of food uh, because it's the theme that comes up. I notice that the P3s keep coming up every every year uh, with the theme of uh, food. And so it's about healthy eating or in this case, unhealthy eating. So um, there's, you know, cause for, con not concern, but for thought about what we actually eat uh, where it comes from, um, how good or bad is it for us. I don't see too many vegetables in there. I think the closest thing is is tomatoes. And I think they're actually a fruit, aren't they, tomatoes? Am I correct in thinking that's right? Well, it's me if I'm wrong. Uh, and actually, there's some mushrooms in there as well. So, I thought, this is, what I, this is my idea. I went out to Pound Stretcher and uh, I got these plates. And these are... Areca leaves. They're made from areca leaves, these things, right? They're pretty sturdy. I've also got a polystyrene one here, and I have got some paper ones kicking around. These are quite small, but hey-ho, let's just give it a go. So what I've done is, 
I've, I've laid down, just look at this bit here, mate. I've laid down a ball of clay like this. I've got these two things which are called spacers and I've got a rolling pin here. Now, I simply would start by knocking this down with a rolling pin. And you're rolling to and fro. Just do, do it two or three times and then turn it over. Now, the surface that I'm working on here is an old cutting board that the kitchen's threw out, so I, I rescued it. But if you can see over there, floor mats, the square floor mats that you can uh, stick down, carpet basically, are great. They're even better. So if you can get hold of some old floor mats, there are different surfaces. It could be a, I could put a piece of fabric over this, it would probably work a little bit better. The idea is that you only do this when you're rolling it two or three times, otherwise it has a tendency to want to stick to the surface. So if I was truly professional, I would probably get a bit of fabric over the top of that, but I'm, I'm just cracking on. These things here are called spacers, uh, like railway lines. You can see the thickness of them, they're both the same. And then the idea is to roll out the clay down to the thickness of the spacers, okay? Right, so I'm not gonna let you keep going on with that because I've already done one here. As you can see, I've already rolled one out. So the idea is simply to lay it on top of my, actually, I'm gonna do it the other way around. Just have a little look at that. So let's just lay that down on top. Yeah, look, it just about works. Now look, look at the tools I've got here. Can you see the tools I've got? I've got some old forks, I've got some old knives here. I've got all sorts. I don't know why I've got plastic pegs in there because that was another project I think we used those for. But also we've got things like we've got toothbrushes. We collect, we collect old toothbrushes, clean them, and, and you can actually use them. They're, they're, they're really great for getting texture. So there's all sorts of tools that you can build up over the years. Okay, clay cuts quite easily. So I've got my plate there. That's already my template. And I'm just going to literally use the back of the fork, work my way around like that. And that should sort of peel off quite simply like that. Okay, I'll just keep those bits. And any bits of clay that you collect, it's a good idea to actually keep them together and they stay moist then. If you leave little bits lying around, they dry out and you can't use clay very well if it's dry. So there you go, we're pretty sure that that's gonna be roughly the right size. So there's my plate. Now you're probably thinking, what's he doing with his plate? You haven't said about that. Now the idea of the plate is, I'm going to try and make a plate of food, okay? So clay is actually one of the most popular materials in art because it's very um, malleable, it's very tact uh, um, tactile and it's just great to play with and you know it's, it's actually quite forgiving and it, when you buy it when you buy it new in the bag, when it, com it comes in these bags, where is it? There's one here. Buy it in these bags. Um, it comes out very moist, so you, you don't have to wet it in order to join it together, unless, of course, it dries out later on down the line. So, I'm going to carry on smoothing this out now. You won't have to watch me go on. So we'll just leave it there for a second. Okay guys, you can see here that we're specifically looking at Popov, and in particular we're looking at Klaus Oldenburg. There's a, there's a name to remember, it's got Berg in it. Think of Berger, Oldenburg. So he does a lot with food. He's a sculptor basically, Popov sculptor, and he works on quite a large scale. So one of his things that he loves to do is to, is to make things out of, sometimes out of various metals, some out, sometimes out of fabrics, um, just, just a whole range of materials, and obviously clay as well, uh, but on a big scale, so it kind of blows your mind away a little bit. It makes you look at scale, what is big, what is small, it doesn't mean anything unless you kind of compare it to something else anyway, but uh, we'll look at that in more detail a little bit later on. So, uh, key, key words I put up, put up here, slabbing and coiling. And the slabbing was me rolling out a slab of clay once I got the air bubbles out using the rolling pin and the spacers. 
Um, I've made sure that's nice and flat. Uh, I've then got my, my plate. This is a wooden plate. This is the first time I've used this, to be honest with you. Uh, the beauty about that is it'll suck the water out of the clay and that will ping off eventually. I normally leave this for about a week to dry out. Um, so we've already created our plate using this equipment and using the slabbing technique. Now we're starting to move into some of the foods. And now the obvious one, and the kids will enjoy, it's, it's about getting the feel of the clay and just working with it. Uh, now, the obvious thing for me to do would be to have a go at a sausage. Okay. Now, this is... Uh, this would be quite straightforward, but as I'm trying to rush everything, what happens is you press it a little bit too hard, and before you know it, you, you it's not actually going your way. So you can just tap these things down, to get the general shape that you want, and then just it, gently roll it. Too heavy-handed, and it sort of changes shape. Now, these are just sausages, so you can just play around with them. doesn't matter if they're all a bit gnarled, and, and they've got little... Uh, little bits of it doesn't have to be what I would say pizza perfect okay because it is literally a sausage so there we go we've got the first sausage made it's quite a big one isn't it okay so and then on we go again we could do the next one but we don't have to repeat that let's just do something a little bit more fun so we're going to go for the egg now the egg you're looking at the yolk you literally need a ball okay so just just working away at that and again kids love to be working with the stuff it's very hands-on and quite exciting to use so I'm working quite quickly here again I'm just going to use my old fork and literally I'm going to cut that in half okay and then I can I can work it around like that now I could I could start rolling again and all that but I think it's quite nice to a lot of this by hand so use the heel of the hand and gently tapping it down like that making it sort of flat, flattish so I'm going for the white bit now which is that's the yolk and that's the white bit so we're just working on the white bit and so we're going to apply the yolk to the rest of the egg and I'm going to show you something here which don't always do because oh god that's all coming off oh look at that oh, that's classic you see look at that so I'm talking, that's sticking on there. You have to keep keep pulling that up now. If we've got any ceramicists watching, they'll be going, God, what's he doing? Um, but never mind, it, you know, it is coming apart now. Let's get that off. Okay, let's not take too much time on this. So here comes the egg. Now what I'm going to do here is I've got a ball. And I'm just going to put a little hole in it. And then I'm just going to try and open it up. So I'm just squeezing and turning. This is known as a pinch pot. And this is quite a useful technique to know because clay, you can't have clay too thick. If you have clay too thick, again, it runs the gauntlet of blowing up in the kiln. Too, too thick, it has a chance of having air bubbles or moisture in it, so you need to hollow it out. But this is another reason for doing this, what I'm doing now. I've made a tiny little pinch pot there and I've got some water in this little teapot and I'm going to pour this water in like that, just a tiny bit. Um, where's my brush? There it is. So here we go, here's the brush and I'm just literally going to stir it. If you can see that, Meg. And this is, this is what I'm creating here. I tell the children sometimes this is like magic glue. But actually what it is is, is, is slip. The, the water is actually mixing with the clay and it becomes... You don't want to be as thick as cream but not not too thin as you don't want it like milk so it's somewhere between milk and cream and there we go that's, that's the magic glue I'm just gonna leave it like that so we're gonna join two bits of clay together normally you don't have to really do this because the clay is quite moist but because we've been here a little while now everything is drying out so we're gonna cross hatch on the area that we want to put this so here we go I'm literally where am I gonna put it just rough, roughly off centre. So I'm going to gentle crosses in different direction like that, cross hatch. The same on the, the yolk. Like that. And then I'm going to add my magic glue, my slip. A little bit on there and a little bit on there. 
and stick that on top like that. And that will help it, that will help it join, okay? Now, obviously, you spend more time smoothing out all these edges and all of that. I'm not going to spend ages on it, but that will help keep those. That is a key which will which will bring those two bits of clay together. That's a joining technique, okay? Using slip, cross-hatch technique on both surfaces, bringing them together like that. Pretty, pretty cool, actually. We'll tidy that up a little bit later. So, there we have it. We've got the eggs or an egg in that instance, and we've got sausage. Okay. Hi guys, right, okay, so I've got my egg, I've got one sausage down there, it's quite a big one, on my plate, so I've got the slab technique, I've got the coil, or I call it the sausage, or it could be a worm technique. Um, the, the egg yolk, as you know, is a spherical shape, a ball which I've cut in half, and now I'm just gonna have a go at a mushroom, I've just cut, another ball in half here so we're just going to speed this up a little bit and i'm going to crack on and make a mushroom but before we do that i just want to remind you again i'm going to be sticking two bits of clay together and again i'm going to be doing the cross hatch technique so that's a quick cross hatch both ways like that on two surfaces that need to be joined together okay bit of the magic um slip magic glue a little bit on there and a little bit on there and then I'm going to bring the two together like that. Right, uh, now we're looking at um, hash browns. And you can see not everything is nice and smooth. So I've done a rough shape of a hash brown. They come in different shapes and sizes, depending on where you get them from. Again, not allowing the clay to go, I would say, any thicker than about two centimetres, or you have to consider hollowing it out. And in fact, I could give a quick demonstration now of that process. I'm gonna do it on here just to show you. Maggie, just film this for a second. So we're gonna cut into this uh, with this tool. It's just a wire tool. And you can actually hollow it out like this. And no one would actually know because that is the side that would be um, sitting on the plate. So you wouldn't actually get to see this. So there you go, obviously it's disappeared. But I've hollowed that out a wee bit. I just felt that that was a bit thick and it may stand a chance of blowing up so anything beyond two centimeters I'd be thinking about hollowing it out okay so I am now going to play with some textured tools what have I got I've just found a, a bit of bubble wrap I just I just thought we'll just have a little go at that let's just roll that on there see if we get anything from it might not I don't know there we go uh, yeah I think there's a little bit of something there can you see that with the light and then the next thing I'm going to try is my old trusty toothbrush. Okay, so let's just knock some of that dry stuff off there. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Look at that. I'm getting some really good textures going on in there. So and I can you can do the sides as well. Okay, it's really good fun, this. This is when it's great clay, because you can... You can press it into all sorts of different surfaces, anything that's got a texture. And lo and behold, you're going to start to get some very interesting um, stuff that actually starts to look like food. And we haven't even put any colour on it yet. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty cool. Uh, what else could I use? What else could I use? I'm going to... Clay picks up clay, by the way. If you haven't got little bits of clay on your, on your table, clay actually picks up clay. It's quite good for that. So, and then here, I'm just going to put, use my fork. I'm just going to add, add, add a little bit of that to it, a little bit, a bit more texture. There we go. We don't want to overdo it. So, um, we were going to time lapse that, but we haven't done now. So, that's, that's cool because we've actually shown you how to hollow out. And if you if you still got happy with that, you can hollow a little bit more out. These tools, you know, these are relatively cheap. Cheap, you can get them through, as I said before, pottery crafts or any half decent art 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 shop or through YPO, where I get a lot of my kit from. Um, so there we go. That's the next next bit of food. We've got a we've got a hash brown to sit on there. Like that. That's pretty cool. Okay, right, now I'm moving on to uh, a piece of bacon. So I've got my rolling pen here. I've got a bit of clay into this kind of shape. Um, let's just have a go. I've been ages since I've done this. So just roll him out. God, blimey. 
Right, we're already there. We're almost already almost already there. Look. I probably just need to thin it a little bit in places and release the weight, press down. I've got to watch this because it will stick I know, to the surface. Oh, that's okay. That's pretty cool. Now, um, now, just laying this down, you don't want everything just to sit absolutely flat. So you can find something um, as a support. And so you can bend the bacon around certain, find some objects that you can use so that that not everything sits absolutely flat. If I look at the bacon in that plate there, you've got the sausage, then you've got the bacon underneath it, it'll have loads of beans and multiples of. So to make things a little bit more convincing, start to make them not just simply sit there on a flat surface, but actually give them a bit of shape. Now, I, again, now I'm just gonna go into time-lapse. Hi guys, okay, so I've just decided that I'm gonna add a wee old fashioned salt cellar here. And this is just solid clay. I've split it in two halves here. I've used my cross hatch technique and my, my slip <clears throat> to join the two bits of clay together. I've just used various tools, the back of a paintbrush to make some sort of little pretend holes in the top. Um, I've used my my wire tool to, to bring a bit of detail into the glass work around the side here like this just having a little bit of fun and playing with it um if i'm honest i think it would probably could survive the kiln and not blow up despite how thick it is but i don't want to take that risk so again i could use this tool um which is the wire tool to start to cut this area out so uh roughly roughly leaving about a centimeter and a bit of wall um, so I can just carry on with that I'm just working my way in there it's quite good fun I actually do some sculptures of my own where I'm doing some head structures like I've, I've overdone it there a bit actually uh, and I actually put candles inside and actually I'm actually over gouge I'm overdoing it there so if, if you do make some holes like I've made an error there I've got I've gone too far all you need is what I call a a plaster of clay you get a little bit of clay you squeeze it wafer thin and then you literally apply it and that's it you fix it that's a little plaster okay so that's it's easily remedied it's easily fixed because that's how beautiful clay is you know it's not like working with stone um, <laughs> you chisel a bit off you can't exactly stick it back on really but with clay you it is a very forgiving medium and that's why it's one of the most popular with children so uh, going on to the next stage uh, I'm just going to show you my board here I've got uh, color and I've got under glazes now not everybody's going to have under glazes but then I will f once they're painted off I will fire them and they'll come back that's called biscuit fire and then we'll put a clear glaze over the top over the top of everything fire it again and they'll just become very very shiny now if we're working with air drying clay so you you won't necessarily need a kiln they could go in the oven or just leave them for a couple of weeks they'll set hard anyway you could paint them with the with the block tempera paints which are the really cheap paints that we use uh, which are fantastic um, um, once they've dried on the biscuit wear you can then coat them with PVA glue. So you just thin down the glue, 10% water in there, and then literally it's like varnishing them. And they would dry and set very hard and be pretty impressive actually. We're fortunate in that we do have a do have a kiln um, and we do have underglazes. And these are the underglazes here. And basically, this is the stuff here, it's an underglaze. It's quite a gloopy stuff. It dries out. You just add a little bit of water to bring it to life again. And then literally you would just start painting with it. And it's pretty cool stuff. So there we have it. And that would dry. That would all get fired. And then, um, I mean, we could also do multiple layers of different colors depending on how accurate we really wanted this 
to be you know I could actually mix some of these colors together and be um, very accurate but if you look at pop art it's quite it's quite garish and one of the things that pop art tries to do is to show that the particularly with fast food burgers you know drive throughs that the the food that you're seeing is looking very beautiful it's loud bright colors um, and that's that is the attraction and although we're not showing like burger and chips there which is one of Klaus Oldenburg's classic ones the same techniques could be used could be employed to make chips and various other um, bits of pieces of food there bits of cheese um, melting and sliming off bright yellow in color looks pretty disgusting actually when you look at it in the cold light of day but some people might say it actually tastes quite nice and ironically you can get all your vegetables in there. I realize I'm looking at beans as well as mushrooms and tomatoes and I've even made a piece of bacon there and that, that's quite a tough thing for a vegetarian to do so I, I've managed that um, so thank you very much for listening Okay, guys, so just thinking about uh, clay, air drying clay, buff clay, not everybody will have it. And if they don't, the alternatives could be um, to use a combination of flour and water, salt, and a bit of vegetable oil. The proportions can vary. There's all sorts of recipes online. You can look into that. Um, I've done some salt dough um, during lockdown. Um, that went quite well but you can also work with cardboard and I've done projects over the years making giant eggs um, and giant plates and giant burgers and cakes and all sorts of different things and this is literally underneath here you've just got a bit of scrunched up newspaper and they've literally paper mache over the top uh, coloured it and then literally PVA glue, once it's dried, PVA glue over the top sets pretty much rock hard. This is actually, this is actually about six years old. We used to have a whole load of fast food hanging from the ceiling up there. But as you can see, uh, most of it's come down. There's still a giant cupcake down there. Meg, can you see it? If you look through here. Um, you can, if you scan up and straight ahead like that into the distance. No, maybe you can't. Uh, but we used to have some cupcakes um, hanging up there, but some of them have been taken down. Do you want to venture in here and have a quick look, Meg? Just, just edit this out. Um, so, yeah, all oh, right, it's up here actually, Meg. Yeah, here we can see the sausies. There they are. There. There's the, the the remnants of the the sausages and the eggs. Uh, which the kids seem to really, really enjoy. So lots of opportunity to be experimental, to use recycling products uh, and have a go and just have fun. Hi guys. Uh, right, so you've just had some demonstrations on joining techniques. Uh, you should now know coiling, slabbing, pinch pot, uh, to name but a few. Uh, and to also be able to use the slip technique. Remember we used the pinch part, a little bit of water, mixed it. So those are joining techniques that you would use to, to bring clay together. Your task is to try and produce a plate of food. Uh, that is your little challenge. So maybe get your hands on an old plate even, find some clay uh, and give it a go. Um, you could use air drying clay if you can get your hands on it. Of course that will dry and set hard. Uh, with air drying clay, we would use normal paint, um, such as acrylic paint. Although I must confess, between you and I, I'm getting rid of all my acrylic paints because obviously plastic isn't good for the environment. So I'll be using water-based paints from here on in. So um, something else we can look at a little bit later on in more detail, what, what's good and bad for the environment and what we can and can't use. So uh, a plate of food, please. Any, any kind of food, it's up to you. Use your imagination, but please use some of the techniques that I've demonstrated. Um, thanks very much. Take care.